what is going through your mind? Uh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I'm awestruck, I'm excited, I'm, I'm anxious, you know, I, I can't wait for everybody in Oklahoma City to, to enjoy what I just did, walking across this park to, to come and talk to you. Um, this is a historic and, you know, once in a generation kind of event for a city, and we're here, finally. And uh, it's gonna be an awesome weekend, but really I think more, just as much, if not more, about all the days after this weekend, you know? And the fact that, as we stand here on Thursday, this is the last day in our city's history that this park won't be a part of our daily lives. And I think for so many people, it will be in the, in the weeks, months, and years ahead. And it's gonna be a catalyst for our city, um, you know, as you look around, you see there's still so much development opportunity around this park uh, and along the boulevard and, and, and the convention center and the Omni yet to come. And the park is not even finished. You know, this is just phase one of the park that we're celebrating. We'll have Union Station renovation. We'll have the lower park opening in a year or two. So it's just it's just exciting. It's, it's a demonstration of the power of maps and the power of the commitment that the taxpayers have had to our city's future. It's just always fun when all of that hard work and all of that years of planning finally pays off in the weekend that we're about to enjoy. Do you think the city and are you guys ready for tomorrow? <laughs> well, I think so, yeah. Uh, so, you know, to, to lay out the weekend, you know, obviously tomorrow night is, it's a concert to celebrate the opening of the park. If you, if you just want to enjoy the park and you're not interested in the concert, you probably want to come Saturday or Sunday because that's when the park will be open in all its glory. But if you want to be a part of the big celebration, that's Friday night and it's a concert. Um, so again, you won't be able to necessarily get to every nook and cranny of the park tomorrow night. Uh, you will first thing Saturday morning and obviously for all the days after that. Um, so we certainly invite everybody to come. We, we think it's going to be a great way to kick the tires on this great lawn. We've never had a venue where you outdoors uh, on this great lawn in a park like you see in Central Park in New York or something, where you get as many people as you can possibly fit to come down for some top tier musical talent. We've never had that opportunity before. And so I thought a year ago, looking at this at this venue that we were building, I wanted to let's 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 use it. Let's show what it's capable of, you know? And so that's what we're doing on the very first night of this park's existence is we're gonna have Kings of Leon, a, a band with local ties that has sold millions of albums and won Grammys and is known around the world to open this park with a free concert. So um, that's what, you know, Friday night is a night to experience that great lawn, which is an element of the park. And then obviously Saturday, Sunday, and all the days after are an opportunity to experience the whole park. And uh, yeah, I think we're, we're as ready as we're going to be. You know, we have an unprecedented amount of law enforcement presence. We know that, you know, big public gatherings are obviously uh, uh, opportunities for good and bad things to happen sometimes, and but we think we're ready for that, and we feel really good about it. And I've met with the police chief and the city manager for many weeks about that. We're going to have truly in Oklahoma City history an unprecedented law enforcement presence. Down here. I was going to ask you about that, about yeah. about the law enforcement presence. We talked a little bit to the police today about exactly what they're doing. To, to anybody out there, I'm sure you've seen comments from people like, "I'm not going. I don't think I'll feel safe." What do you tell folks about, about the police presence that will be here and, and your level of confidence in the safety? First of all, I respect everybody's personal choices, you know, like, so I, I don't, you know, I don't judge anybody for how they, uh, where they decide to be and, and how they decide to live their lives. Me and my family, we want to live our life. We want to come down and enjoy public gatherings like this. And so that's what we're going to do. And as a mayor, it's my duty to make sure that we have taken every necessary and every possible uh, precaution, and that's what I feel like our police department is doing. And so I feel really good about it. I mean, I think I think we absolutely are doing everything we possibly can to make it a wonderful, safe environment. And it's also worth. I mean, it's not as if, even though we've never had this many people gathering, maybe outside, we certainly have people converge in the city in these numbers all the time. I mean, twenty thousand people descend on Chesapeake Arena every every three days. You know, so. Um, you know, it's not as if we've never had this many people come together. This is just a new venue and a new experience and the fact that it's outdoors. But um, I feel as good as I possibly could about it. And, and I think we've done everything we possibly can. And, and I think people make their own choices about whether to participate or not. But we, we are not really worried about too few people showing up. <laughs> I think we're going to have plenty of people show up. And, um, and there is, I should say, I mean, there is a capacity in this park. There, there are laws of physics that we can't violate. <laughs> And at some point, you know, we're going to fill up probably tomorrow night. Uh, the streets around the park are closed, so, you know, people will make decisions about they can probably hang out nearby and still hear the music for sure. So, 
you know, we'll see how all that plays out. But we expect tens of thousands of people and, and an amazing night in our city's history. Uh, I guess what's your advice to people when they're coming down here and like obey the rules, <laughs> behave? <laughs> I'll say a few things. I mean, obviously, first of all, just arrival, you know, think about the fact that there's really no available parking right here at the park. There will be next Tuesday, but Friday night, there's not. Everything's really kind of shut down, plus what few spots there might be, I'm sure, are going to be gone by about 2 o'clock. So, you know, park far away, take the streetcar. That's why we created a streetcar. It's for just occasions just such as this. And, and understand that, again, we do this every three or four nights here in Oklahoma City across the street. So we bring in 20,000 people all the time to this area. So I know everybody will figure it out and find a way to converge. And so... Yeah, just be safe and, and maybe look at the list. Think about, for Friday night especially, just think about if you were going to a concert at Chesapeake Arena, the kinds of things you could or couldn't bring. That's basically the same kind of list for this. This is a concert in a concert venue that we built. This happens to be outdoors. Um, so think about that, and if you're still unsure, go to the Scissor Tail Park website, Google Scissor Tail Park, and you'll find the list of things um, for Friday nights again. Saturday and Sunday, it's more like a normal park. You bring your picnics and your footballs so you in your, your chairs. Um, and obviously one last thing I'd say to everybody, if you don't respect the park, this is your park. A lot of people are going to descend on a relatively small amount of space um, and, and it's going to be crowded and it's probably not going to be the experience you'll ever have again. You know, I think this will be a, a slightly more sedate and relaxing environment in the weeks and years ahead. This weekend is probably going to be pretty crowded and, and it's going to be choked with people. And I would just say, remember that when you step on a bush, <laughs> You're, it's not just you, you know, and if 20,000 people do that, that bush is going to die. So be kind to your park, it's your park, respect it, and, uh, and let's just all come together and have fun and enjoy nature and enjoy our city and be one OKC. I think it's going to be an amazing and fun weekend. So you've talked about a lot of things going on in the park, going outside of the park and around to local businesses and things like that. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of, obviously, opportunity for local businesses to thrive this weekend. There's one, I won't give it a free plug, it's going to do just fine, <laughs> anyways, that, that got ahead of the curve and is actually open on the park. I will say, I, I certainly compliment that they've donated their deck tomorrow night for the concert to, to local charities, so that, that's a really cool thing. But uh, I think they're going to do just fine the rest of the weekend. And yeah, come down and enjoy all that Oklahoma City has to offer. From the park, you're walkable to Bricktown and all the downtown establishments and your street horrible to all of downtown Oklahoma City. So, you know, I would encourage people come multiple times. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not, not going to live here this weekend. But for, for everybody else, come Friday night to the concert. Come back Saturday or Sunday. Enjoy the rest of the park. Enjoy the other entertainment and the other functions we're going to have. And then ride the streetcar and, you know, eat lunch somewhere else. You know, eat dinner here at a food truck. I mean, make a make a weekend of it in downtown. I think that's a, that opportunity is absolutely there. And I certainly encourage people to, to take that opportunity. Mayor. Mayor, can you can you talk a little bit about about the public ownership of the park? I know you did a very capable job on Twitter last night of dealing with you know some some objections about that, about the the things that cannot be brought in, uh, and uh, why that is, and and then then uh, contrasting that with the, with the fact that that guns can be allowed in. Sure. Uh, just just kind of distinguish those things yeah. a little bit. So so all gun laws are state laws. So we have no bearing on gun laws. So so in our in our case in Oklahoma, uh, you can't prohibit guns in a park. So that we just sort of set aside. So what we we focus on what we can control. So we can control every other object. As far as I'm aware, there's no state laws on frisbees and cameras and all these other things. And so we just had to for Friday night specifically create an environment for a concert a top tier concert with an act that has its own expectations. And as I said earlier, you know, think about what you could have brought last night to the Carrie Underwood concert in Chesapeake Arena. It's basically the same environment. We created a concert venue um, very intentionally and, and we want to try it out on the very first night. And so that great lawn with some expense and some added equipment that you're seeing behind me um, becomes a concert venue, much like Zoo Amphitheater or Chesapeake Arena or any other place, and by bringing in an act uh, of the caliber of Kings of Leon, other expectations are also created. And so, yeah, it, the list of things you can or can't bring Friday night to the Kings of Leon show is basically the kinds of things you can or can't bring to a concert in a concert venue with a top tier act. And once you think of it that way, I don't think the list is particularly surprising.
So some people were bringing up, though, that, that you can't take a gun inside of the Chesapeake Arena. So right. so, so distinguish those two. Things. Right. So inconsistency or logic has no bearing on the enforceability of state laws. <laughs> And, and uh, a, a, there's a state law that says you can't bring a gun in Chesapeake Arena, and there's a state law that says you have to allow guns in parks. And it doesn't really matter. It, 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 it looks good on Twitter to, to show the inconsistency or log logic in that, but it doesn't change the law. <laughs> you got to talk to your legislators for that. So. Would you push legislators to change that rule to allow well, cities to, to make these kind of decisions for controlled access what, events? For sure. What I feel like, for sure, is when you have we're gonna have security screening, right? So when you have a controlled access environment and a venue like this uh, and security screening, I think you ought to be able to, to control that. We just we can't today, but yeah, I, I fully intend to have that conversation. We'll see where it goes. Um, you know, I'm, I, I used to be only one of 149 and now I'm zero of 149, but I certainly have a story to tell and I think people need to hear it because it, it's certainly been uh, a bit of a hassle on this event. We're, we've moved past it, and it's going to be not as big a deal. There was a very similar event, didn't get the same media attention, but it had the same volume of people and the same setup in one of our city parks uh, two or three weeks ago, and there was one concealed carry permit holder. So I, I think it's a much ado about that. Yeah. But, um, but nevertheless, I think it's it's enough of a concern, even if it's if it's a minimal issue in a practical sense. It's enough of a concern that it needs to be talked about. I'll certainly bring it to the attention of the legislature so that we can do stuff like this again, especially after November 1st, when, when it's not just limited to permit holders. Um, you know, but again, I think it's, I don't think, by, I don't think on Monday morning we're gonna be remembering that issue very much. It's, it's sort of got elevated a little bit more than that. Do you think it's gonna help a lot that you were a part of that, part of that Republican legislature that voted in that particular preemption measure there? Do you think it's gonna help you lobbying the legislature that you, just to, you know, so just you to were clarify. once for it, now <laughs> you're against it? Well, just to, just to clarify, that issue was never voted on while I was in the legislature. I, I've heard people say that. Oh, that, okay. Yeah, uh, open carry was voted on when I was in the legislature. But that was about how you carry, how free you carry. So, right. um, no, that's, that's been in law for decades. Yeah. As long as we've had probably the concealed carry permit laws. Um, Do you plan on taking on the preemption? tendencies of the legislature a lot. Do you think you think a city ought to be able to control its own sure. its I've, own environment? I've always been for, for city rights and I, I recognize that's not necessarily been in vogue the last decade of the legislature, so I don't know if that's a winning battle, but yeah, I'm always gonna stand for that. I didn't I didn't support the law this year that stopped cities from banning bags, even though I don't think we have any plans to do that. I just don't like when our, our powers get taken away. Uh, I think here at the very least I'd like to look at a at a change to allow events like this. You know, I mean this is this is somewhat new wrinkle. Like we haven't really had a park with a concert venue inside of it um, until this year, I guess. I mean I can't really think of another example. So it only has come up this year. This issue really was never discussed in the eight years I was in the legislature. I mean that just never never came up. Nobody ever introduced a bill. It was just it just has been a non issue and it came up this year because basically we built a concert venue in a park. And I think that's that's the crux of the issue. And yeah, I, I certainly do intend to have those conversations, whether that leads anywhere uh, or not. Lots of people think the mayor of Oklahoma City just snaps his fingers and the legislature jumps. And I can I promise you that's not the case. That's uh, probably way more than, I, than any of us wanted to talk about that issue. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, shifting, shifting gears to a little bit lighter of topic. Yeah. As mayor, you go to a lot of, lot of ribbon cuttings. What's so special about this one? Uh, you know, this is this is a jewel in our city. That, I'm sorry, getting everybody's microphone. Uh, this is a jewel in our city that is very expensive, 130 million dollars. It's very hard fought. I mean, if I, I was just telling the story, I mean, this story starts in 1950, uh, 1964, 55 years ago, when when city planners in this city first talked about the need for a great green space in our downtown, and that ultimately evolved into the Myriad Gardens. But obviously, there was a de desire beyond that. More. And in the 90s, the relocation of Interstate 40 sparked this. Somebody whose name is lost to history first threw out the idea, hey, maybe you could put a park in there to fill that space that's left by the relocation of Interstate 40. That led to the core to short planning process where that idea of a park here first really got uh, confirmed and, and formalized. And then Mayor Cornette and the council in 2009 putting forward this park to be funded by the voters in Map 3 and then the 
whole campaign that ensued there, and then the vote, and, and then the 10 years of work that's taken to get here. I mean, it's exhausting just to explain the story. So it's, it's certainly worth being proud and excited when you cut that ribbon. And then at the end of all of that is this amazing payoff. It's a reminder, if you're persistent and patient in American democracy, you can experience, you can realize amazing achievements. You just gotta, you just gotta stick at it, and, and that's the case here. This is really a, a 55 year story, and at the very least, a 25 year story of getting to this point. Um, but now we have this, this catalyst, I think, for all of downtown. We really have now all the, with this and the opening of the convention center, you know, we have all the major building blocks of the great American downtown uh, about to finally be in place. And it took maps one and three to get us to that point. Um, and that's, I think we're celebrating this park, but I also think we're celebrating this map story. And we're reminding ourselves of what happens when we stick at it and we, and we dream big. And because we have that opportunity again on December 8th, on December 10th with maps four. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for your interest. I suppose we'll see you tomorrow. Yes. <laughs>